Could going nuclear be the secret to better space travel? Well, NASA is partnering with the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, on this new project. And they're seeking to develop and demonstrate a nuclear propulsion system that has national security applications as well as implications for space travel. Now, DARPA has an existing program called DRACO, and if successful, the project will shorten travel time to Mars, making it safer for human exploration. Here to join us for more, Dr. Anthony Calamini with NASA. Dr. Calamino, thank you for being here. Thank you, Natasha. How long does it take to get to Mars now? And, and what are the dangers? How could this potentially change that? So the typical travel time or transit time to Mars right now is seven months. Uh, that's a, quite a bit of time in space being exposed to radiation effects from cosmic sources. Uh, and for the future missions, we're actually planning on using humans or having human exploration missions. That time will be a little bit longer for them uh, just to uh, be able to actually conduct the mission. And then you have the transit time there and back. And are there any dangers to harnessing nuclear power to travel in space? No, actually, there are, uh, you know, in all cases, you know, there are safety concerns and safety is number one for NASA. We're, we're always pay attention to that first, especially when astronauts are involved. Uh, but the nuclear technology that we're using is actually uh, terrestrial based fuels and terrestrial based materials that have been uh, in in service for, for many decades. Uh, we've gained a lot of knowledge on them in terms of engineering and, and we're ready to use them in space now. And there are national security applications, as we said, uh, to this nuclear technology. Can you help us understand that piece of it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, as I, you know, kind of understand it, it, it really kind of goes to mobility in space. I, I think the analogy that that one might want to look at in that is is the mobility on the seas, with a navy, and I think the United States is looking for similar mobility in space. And this would be a capability that would provide that. With this technology, when could we see humans making that first trip to Mars, do you think? The, uh, right now, uh, NASA is looking at mission uh, possibilities or potentials in the early 2040s. And that's a time frame that we could hit with this technology. We would, we would have time to actually advance it in near Earth uh, conditions and then, and then use it for uh, a Mars mission in the early 2040s. Do you think that the future of space travel uh, could really be opened up and changed by this technology? Tremendously, yes. I really do think that this is going to change the way that we look at space travel. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, a capability that can give us much higher velocities on the vehicle. Uh, we don't need to bring as much propellant mass to, to space for this. The really nice thing about the nuclear technology is that the reactor is uh, will have a service life of of anywhere from 10 to, I'm sorry, five to 10 years that it could actually operate, which means we really don't have to change out anything related to the, the reactor. We would just need to sort of refuel the tanks and be able to then go ahead and use the system again. Can you help break down for us, as of right now, what is the rate limiting step when it comes to space travel? Why can't we go outside of the Milky Way and just visit other galaxies? Uh, it, it, it really is time and space, right? And, and, and that's, that's still years away uh, for us to be able to get a capability where uh, we can consider things beyond, say, Mars or, or Venus in, in terms of um, human, human missions anyway. Certainly, we've sent probes deeper than that. But, you know, the, the, the real challenge is, is it, it is going to be um, time, transit time. The other challenges are that when you have humans uh, that are involved, there's a lot of other payload concerns uh, to be able to give them the food, the materials, the oxygen, the things that they need to actually be able to survive and be safe in space. All right, Dr. Calamino, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.